Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast, where I just got back from being crowned Miss Alabama. Oh my gosh. I mean, you do kind of look like her. Sure. Okay. You're probably about a foot taller than her, though. Mm -hmm. know about that i actually wanted to figure out start off reading from uh the u.s ministry of truth or the <laughs> united states ministry of truth um is that your go-to news source andrew it is 100 <laughs> percent oh if i read that's when i retweeted it yeah i did but it's in my what it's in my replies instead of being in my posts weird so alert emoji the you know the red light Okay. Old police cherry light. Okay. Uh, Bidenomics. Big bold letters. Budget cuts force annual Miss Alabama competition and state hot dog eating contest to combine shows shows this year. <laughs> How many hot dogs do you think she can guzzle? I don't know. Um, what's his name? Joey? Johnny? Whatever that always wins the one in uh new york what's that what's that fucking place called? And it's always on the like fourth of famous, july or yeah, something yeah the nathan's yeah. famous joey chestnut yeah joey chestnut's like 50 pounds lighter than me and he can eat almost 80 that's crazy in 10 minutes so she can probably guzzle double no, that no 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 that's that's been like <laughs> the thing forever is actually like the the bigger people are actually not as competitive in the sport interesting and I remember um, Joey talking about it once, like in an interview or something like that. I actually think it was on Drinking Bros, because he was on Drinking Bros a couple years ago. Okay. But I think, or no, no, I know what it was. It was Sports Science. This is a show that you've probably never watched. It was on ESPN. Nope, and definitely. I've never seen it. The guy, and I can't remember his name. Don't know who he is. Um, they used to do, like, breakdowns of, like, how high can this guy really jump? And, like, how far can he reach with the ball? And... How much energy did Jordan need to like spring from the free throw line to dunk the ball? Like, it's, okay, it was usually stuff like that. Okay, and then they did the hot dog eating contest one year, and they were talking about the capacity for the stomach to be able to expand, and it's actually more expandable in somebody that has low body fat because okay. they're they're the rest of the tissue in their body surrounding their stomach can expand. Oh, okay, okay. Whereas the insulation will right. follow that on the bigger the people, visceral fat, yeah. It's, restricts it's, it. It's harder to push up against, so they don't gotcha. actually have the capacity for more, okay. which is completely counterintuitive. Because mm -hmm. what it really is saying is that the fatter you get, the less you can eat, which then you would think would make them become skinny again, but it doesn't. Interesting. But it's also because of you know other things like not being active and right. eating the wrong kinds of foods and right. yeah. So, um, talk about that. What do you? Uh, that's. You you mentioned it and I didn't know anything about it and that was the first thing I saw and I was like okay, we can talk about that. Well, I only mentioned it to you because we just talked about Lizzo being inclusive, body positivity, and I kind of feel like they're the, pandering here. Probably. They're pandering. Three to... of the three of the five women look like traditionally right. pretty. There's um, one that's a, I would say mid sized right yeah. there the white in the white dress. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know a lot about pageants, but when you think of a pageant person, you definitely think of the stereotypical Is it, or like Barbie. Miss, miss State, Miss Country, Miss World, Miss Universe, whatever. Aren't, aren't there more things that go into it than just? I think you're supposed to have a talent. You say you want world peace. And you have a big, pretty smile. I've never seen any of this <laughs> That's shit. About so all, it, I, but... all I know are like the stereotypical stuff that they show in like movies or TV shows mm -hmm. when they're making fun of it. Right. When it's like... Like Miss Congeniality. The, the, dumb... the perfect date. The... Oh, I didn't know. April 25th. <laughs> I thought that that was from Mean Girls. I didn't even know that that's from that movie. I thought it was from Miss Congeniality. Well, now I'm questioning my reality here. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. That's some... Um... In Alabama, though, like I would not, right. I would have thought California, New York. Uh, Illinois. When I think Alabama, I think blonde. No, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm saying, like even to let them get to that point, right? Like, 
That's why I think they're definitely pandering. I wonder who she knows. Uh, I don't, um, honestly, <laughs> I don't think it's a her thing. I think that it's come from the higher ups of, for, for the judges sure Alabama's and the judges pretty, were told, all Alabama. right, we need to be inclusive this year. We need to, we need to do right by the larger population. I, I don't think it has anything to do with who she is as a person. I she look, just happens to fit the box that they needed to fill. I want to look at Alabama's voting results from 2020 and see. Trump won the state by a fucking landslide. Of Holy course, shit. it's Alabama. Yeah, but I'm it's just like the reddest of the red. Yeah, he won. He won 62.2 percent of the vote, and Biden got 36.7 percent of the vote. Yeah, I believe it. So. I wonder, I wonder who's running that because wasn't that something that Trump did? Didn't he on like I have, own again, something? Again, I genuinely know nothing about pageants and the pageant world. I remember that being. But I something... think they have to accommodate going into like they're 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 breaking down to the state to then go on to compete against everybody else from other states. I be, believe in like Las Vegas or something. So they're competing to be like Miss America from the each individual state. And then hey, the state wears a belt. What? Oh. <laughs> There's the whole state is red. So I'm thinking that it came from the higher ups who are going to be running the Miss America or whatever pageant, which I know there's multiples and I'm probably butchering it here. There's like Miss Universe, Miss America, Miss. I thought that they whatever. were. I thought you moved. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah, but. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But obviously, you have to you have to win the state first before you can go to the next. So oh, Miss here's, Alabama will be moving on. Here's something interesting. Yes. On Politico's website for the polls, it says that the the poll numbers were last updated January sixth, twenty twenty one, at four forty four p.m. Eastern time which I think is right about the time when he was giving the speech. Okay. So they were updating the results all the way up until that moment. Okay. It's just, it's, <laughs> it's weird to me. Well, okay, no, Alabama's in Central Time Zone, so maybe, no, it says Eastern Time Zone right there. But I know the state is in Central Time Zone. Okay. So I guess... Yeah, it would have been, yeah, they were updating it all the way. That's weird. Like, I thought, like, once they counted and they said the numbers are final, I thought the numbers are final. Like, once once there's been a decision and it's been filed off with whatever system. Maybe just in case they're asking for, like, a recount or something, they're going to continue. Um, I don't know. Well, what's... Like with a specific margin of victory and knowing the remaining allowable votes or potential registered voters, you would mm -hmm. know like even if, for example, 99.9% .9 percent of votes were counted and you knew that somebody was winning by more than a percentage point, that 0.1% is not going to make a difference. So right. you would still have to keep them. I don't know. I just didn't think that they were going to keep updating it. I thought they were just going to say, well, that happened and now it's done with. We're not going to, everybody else's shit doesn't matter. I mean, the reason between Brandon and Tony went down to 400 yeah. votes he, between the two. He said, um, there's no, um, there's no like, um, evidence or anything like that that would require a recount. So he's already conceded. Gotcha. Um, so we'll so, go right from there into from Miss Alabama to Kaylin Clark and player salaries. And okay, yeah. let's do it. So all I know is that she played at Purdue, right? Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, she played at Purdue. She's she's on the NBA now. Yeah. Which again, that's another. Remember how I was talking about how hockey and baseball they go right from their college season right into playing for their pro team. Gotcha. That's so not, college had just finished, and then that's but that's not something. So I didn't know that that also happened in women's basketball, or mm -hmm. I don't think that happens in the NBA, to the best of my knowledge. I have no idea. I'm pretty sure the NBA draft is in the summer. I think, maybe it's not. I don't know. I've never. And watched then the NBA I've draft. also heard that they'll go from we just the talked... WNBA to 
overseas and play overseas and that's what happened with those are the Grimers. people that's the, am i saying that right that's the same thing that um like the farm league players for baseball mm -hmm. they're drafted by the major league team mm -hmm. but they have to basically earn their spot on the starting roster to get moved up to the mlb team gotcha so that's a completely different thing going to europe or asia and playing it's a money thing right no i did know that yeah Right, so they hypothetically could play three different teams all in the same year. Maybe it depends. If on what they their go contract. straight from college depends. to the WNBA to then overseas, it depends on what their contract is. I don't know if they're because you can get drafted and then not make you know the final roster. Mm -hmm. You could still be cut. Okay. So that depends, but they're the WNBA is not sending you to Europe or Asia to play. Right, I did know that. So. Um, so yeah, yeah the the numbers have already tanked again. The only time that people watch is are when when she's playing, and it's only when there's another like, um, what do they call like a villain? A rival? No, a villain. A rival? No, it's, they're not her rivals because they've never played each other. I'm not a rival with fucking I don't know NC State because I've never played against them. They're not my rival. Your rival is somebody that you've consistently played against over time and you've okay. developed a relationship with in some capacity. Okay. Michigan and Ohio State are rivals. Alabama and Auburn are rivals. Okay. Caitlin Clark and the So Indiana... these are all people who she played against when she was in college no, and they all had beef with her? Or... No. no, that's what I'm saying is that they're not. Okay. They're just, they're a villain. They're another character. This is all wrestling type stuff where everybody has a personality Lame. they have a personality because that's what sells tickets and that's what gets Lame. people in the seats and that's what sells merchandise there was a quote and i didn't save it or maybe i did and i don't remember which app it was on but there was some other girl that was talking about her mm -hmm. and i think it was the girl from the game when we were at lunch with my dad mm -hmm. last week um i believe it was the girl from the videos that you or that we had seen independently where she was like body checking her and like knocked and people were rightfully so one of them she started to look like lebron james flopping on the floor like she was trying to get the foul call but i didn't watch before or after that so mm -hmm. i don't know what led to that if right. she was trying to draw something because it kept happening or mm -hmm. what the case might be so with that being said um yeah these they're they develop like these personalities or personas mm -hmm. and characters and stuff and a lot of it in some sports, depending on who your agent and whatever other brands that you have deals with and stuff like right. that, they might say, hey, off court, we want you to be this. Mm -hmm. And so-and-so is going to be your... Nemesis? Yeah. Mm. And, I mean, that's happened in pretty much every sport. Really? Yeah. What would you say is another big? Another big example of that? Mm -hmm. Well, like the pro wrestling thing is is one. Okay. That's all but scripted. I, that's all scripted. That's yeah. fake. Like I'm I'm talking about basketball, football. Off the top of my head, I not can't, scripted. Off the top of my head, I can't think of a like a a major one that in recent years. But mm -hmm. um, there's been ESPN. What do they call it? They have their they have documentaries about both current and former stuff. There's like E60 is one of them. I can't remember what the other one is. I can't remember which one it was on. Okay. But they talked about, I believe it was like Larry Bird and some other people. Like they talked about how they didn't actually like dislike each other on the court. Okay. That was just what they were doing. Like it's like today. People talking shit to each other on Twitter or whatever. It's just, I mean, that is a part of sports. That's a, even a part of our military culture and even like inner family the you know sibling feud type stuff you do that and then okay. you put on your performance but then behind closed doors when you guys are drinking and hanging out together you're like oh man that was really funny or dude that was fucking bullshit don't do that again and then you're like all right cool shake hands and then you go back on the court and you do it again mm. yeah there's been so you think that's what's happening here some of it but she might not necessarily be one of the ones that's like anointed like a character mm -hmm. other people 
both because of their brand deals and because they feel slighted because they were never as famous as she already is. The one quote... I think she's being picked on. Yeah. The one quote that I saw was something along the lines of, um, she did this and that, but she's only here because of me. Like, basically taking credit for her gotcha. success. Even though they're on different teams. And I, was, as a non-basketball so, watcher, so, has only heard this girl's name and have no idea who these other people are. I read it I read it two different ways. Well, I grew up next to Notre Dame, so I know a couple of, like, other ones in the past. Mm-hmm. And then what's her name? They got arrested in Russia. Um, like Sky, I think it was one of the girls' names that went to Notre Dame mm-hmm. and ended up playing for Chicago or Indy as well. Like, they, they both, like, stayed, like, right there, which is kind of uncommon. Um... Lost my train of thought there. Talking about her deal and famous, famous women yeah. basketball players. I know all of like two, three. <laughs> but that's that's the thing. Like they're gonna now that they have a character mm-hmm. that they can latch onto, mm-hmm. somebody that became a household name during the playoffs, mm-hmm. the college basketball playoffs. That is, um, they're gonna latch onto her and. Because it's a, it's also more or less an off-season sport. Like right now, the major sports that people are watching are the NBA playoffs, the NHL playoffs, the uh, NASCAR and Formula One, and golf. But basketball and, and hockey as well play like several times in, in a single week. They don't okay. just they don't just play like Saturday or Sunday, Saturday or Sunday every week. Mm-hmm. They play like two or three games a week every week. Okay, so they have they have an audience of people that just put something on in the background at the barber shop okay. versus somebody going to the sports bar at 10 PM on a Saturday to watch like a UFC fight. Okay. Did you watch the video of the girl pushing her and what her mouth moves and what do you think that she said? Oh yeah. 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 I saw that. Is that, uh, that might be the same girl. They looked I similar, but I think I'm not they're sure. not the same girl. No, no, no. no. What I'm you're talking the about. Meme, the, or not right. meme, but the you're talking, I, saw. I believe it's two separate women. Um, I don't even know. Is it K A T? Okay. It came right up. I don't know. I watched it and it looked like she said dumb bitch. Yeah. I saw that. That's just what it looked like to me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Every single picture, all the top stories, images are just unflattering. Mm-hmm. Her falling over. Mm-hmm. I think that's the girl that was almost Chicago Sky player reports players report harassment at a team hotel. That's the girl who I believe Ken- said dumb Kennedy bitch. Carter. So somebody the, the one that you're talking about is a different person. Um okay. This looks like the same person that I'm talking about. This looks like who I'm talking about. Mm. I'm I don't know. Let me, uh, what's her name? Chennedy. Is that how you spell it? I don't know. That's literally how it's spelled. Chennedy. Chennedy Carter. They both have C names. Caitlin yeah. Clark, Chennedy Carter. Yeah. That's like when these bots and shit for like people in India and China are making fake profiles and they like don't know real English names. So they just throw a bunch of letters together right, that seem right. to form a word. I mean... That happened on their birth certificate too. So, what? Their mom just threw together a bunch of random oh. letters. I told you about some of the names when I worked in the hospital, right? We used to look at the birth, mm-hmm. the uh, tracking board for OB. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that was like any time that we had like five or ten minutes where there weren't any trauma patients coming in, we were looking like, who's the who's the crazy thing? name today? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What was the craziest name you ever saw on the board? Oh, my God. There was one that was like five names or six <laughs> names, okay? And all of them started with La. It was like La Queen, La Tifa, La. I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, and those were all first names? That's, it, yeah, I don't remember what the last name was. But, yeah, it was all, every every part of the name mm-hmm. started with La apostrophe. Right. And then it was a normal name. It'd be like La, Nona, La, Charlotte, <laughs> La, Chloe. No, thank you. La, no, thank you. you <laughs> yeah, I'm not finding what I saw, but. So but, the the it, girl the girl who pushed her and what I believe said dumb bitch 
refused to talk to the media after and was only fined a thousand dollars when i told him that it was only a thousand dollars he was like what what's his face got fined what quarter of a million for Our yeah yeah <laughs> but hey. my comment was i kind of wonder her salary it's like one tenth of what Marshawn Lynch's was. But that's because Marshawn sells tickets and apparel and stadium sizes are dramatically larger and he has brand deals and brings in money for the team. And they also have bonuses for scoring and certain milestones and things like that. Whereas when you are a rookie, even in football, you only make a specific base. Set. I mean, so the their base salary is still like three to four times the, higher. The training, than... the training team for an NFL team during the uh, spring and summer workouts, uh, they make three hundred thousand dollars a year. Those and are... these girls are making seventy five. But nobody, nobody wants to watch them. That's why. If if more people watch the sport and bought their merchandise and bought tickets, filled arenas, they would make more money. That's that's what the entire business is is predicated around. It right now it's being subsidized by the NBA. Mm -hmm. So the NBA players are actually being slighted because they're losing out on potential money. But the, you think so? I mean, part of their part of what would typically be part of their contract if the women's league did not exist mm -hmm. would either go to the owners or to the team and players or whatever. They're just basically siphoning some of that off to subsidize the league expenses. And those teams play in the NBA arenas. They're owned by the same owners. So mm -hmm. they're, the owners are just trying to put more activities in their venue so that it's not sitting empty. Right. Okay. So the Caitlin Clark effect and the uncomfortable truth behind it, something, I don't know, it's on Reddit. We should not delude ourselves into believing her appeal as an influencer is based solely on basketball because it's not. Okay. So there's a conspiracy theory for everything. So what if what if she wasn't a basketball player? What would we know her for? I don't know anybody out of any other college that just was a college student that graduated. I don't know. I don't know who graduated from Duke that is going to go work for fucking Ford. Right. Yeah. So, and I mean, would you even call her an influencer? I've never seen anything about her that was from her own channels and not right. from... Right, so are they theorizing that she's like a plant and that I don't know. There's... powers that be have manipulated the situation to make her the, the popular one the colorado sun one thing's for sure about the many layered caitlin clark story what is what some are the many layers in, some WNBA play, nba players are jealous of clark's fame and riches maybe or no it's has like, she signed like multiple deals with like brand believe, being a brand ambassador or had, something like that no i believe she had a deal with nike like probably gate uh, like that but um, and that says maybe, but let me tell you a little story about Michael Jordan. Okay. That, what I was watching this morning, the, his original deal in 84 with Nike. Yeah. Their, their, um, threshold for failure was $3 million over three years. Okay. And they made $186 million in the first year. Okay. So they set the bar here. Yeah. And then they fucking blew it to space. Gotcha. And uh, I mean, like, I don't like Nike anything. I don't like any. I haven't worn anything Nike since middle school. Two thousand seven. I bought a pair of Nike shocks while I was in the army, and the first PT fucking run that I did in them, the heel ripped off of them, and that's the last time I bought anything. Nike, Nike. shocks aren't a running shoe. They were the. They were, they're not a running shoe. No, no. I'm saying they were like the the only shoe that I could find where I was at and I needed new shoes. Okay. So I won't wear them anymore because of that. Mm -hmm. And I will never wear Reebok mm -hmm. because they screwed me up. So. Mm -hmm. He is Under Armour only. Yep. I'm wearing two pieces of Under Armour clothing right now. 
Are you going to get them to endorse you? I don't know. Under Armour. Hit me up. Drop us a sponsorship. Um, here's uh, somebody's podcast. I think the podcast is called Sore Losers. And the, the name of the episode is Why Does Everyone Hate Caitlin Clark? Okay. <laughs> I, yeah. I haven't heard anything negative about her, but I also don't go diving for it. There's so much. There's so much. So that's uh, John Cardillo actually was like, you guys should talk about her. All right, so, John, we're doing this for you. Yep, it's going yep. very, very well. Can't you tell? Yeah. And very, for, very well. And f- yeah. And for those, of, <laughs> for those of you that are watching this, he uh, recommended a uh, supplemental format for like one episode a week where like for our guest spots. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this is the first time she's hearing about this too. Okay. He suggested that because of the title of the show and because of it being opposing viewpoints and stuff like that, that our guest be like a judge or arbiter that determines at the end of the show who's right and who's wrong. So they bring up talking points. We discuss it. So basically, he's going to get all of his friends to come on and tell me that I'm wrong. See? That's exactly what's going to happen. No. I already know. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. And you know that they're half of them will come on and intentionally say that you're right no. just to screw with me. No. Yeah. Yeah. They'll pick topics. They'll pick topics that they'll be like, my wife told me to talk about this, this, and this, because Andrew will have no idea what any of that is. No. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, I'm right. Um, I know that you're wrong and that she's right. No, nope, I'm right. Because she's right. I'm right. And he's wrong. I'm right. I'm always right. I've been right every day of my life. Yeah, I am. That is incorrect. So those were like the two biggest things that I wanted to talk about on this. But um, one topic that doesn't really fit into any episode, since this is short right now, unless you have something else you want to talk about, Mm -hmm. the fucking toilet paper still. What's wrong with the toilet paper? Well, you always buy the Costco brand, so you... You haven't noticed it like I have. Okay. But at the beginning of COVID, Mm -hmm. all the brands except Costco Mm -hmm. chopped like three quarters of an inch off the width of the roll. Okay. And they still sold it as the same packaging. And you can put a Costco roll next to Charmin, anything else. Okay. And they're all three quarters to an inch shorter on their side. Okay. Still to this day. Okay. Nobody's talking about it. It has made me so mad since the first. It's not just toilet paper, though. Everything is shrinking. No, no, no. Look at a bag of potato chips. There's like four chips in it now for double the price of what it was before COVID. There's a whole um, really cool video that I watched. Shrinknomics? No, no. So there's a really cool video that I watched a while back um, regarding repackaging and rebranding and things like that for like when they when they change from like fam the you so let's take like lays right so you have like okay. a bag of lays and it's okay. by weight but you have like a bag size mm-hmm. but then they'll rebrand their entire line so they'll have like family size party size yeah yeah so, single serving no, sat they, ass on they, the couch portion they don't they don't call it single serving they <laughs> call it um unless it's those little packs but um they're like the value. The value pack. Value pack. Yeah. But then value pack, instead of being the cheaper option, mm-hmm. became the two pack or multi pack bag that where they're like taped together like the Mexican cheese that you buy from Costco. Okay. Like now they call buying more the value mm-hmm. because they changed what value is. Okay. It's not spending less money. Mm-hmm. It's making it's, your life easier buying two at the exact same yeah, time and being stuck with the price. Like all of these, all of these companies and brands and agencies and stuff like that for the longest, like for basically our entire life and probably longer, they've all employed in some capacity psychologists mm-hmm. to determine that. what, like how to phrase it and mm-hmm. what to say and how to do it. And Yeah. But there is actually legitimate reasoning for there being so much air in the bag. That I understand they are trying to prevent the chips from being broken down. 
But at the same time, they used to be able to fit a lot more chips in there. And, and now... more of them will be broken. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yep. Mm -mm. Yeah, it is. Mm -mm. Yeah, it is. There's people, I've read some of this stuff because it gets wild. There are people that have dedicated like their lives because you know, you know how there's- To finding the perfect chip? No, no. There's people that like, collect like Twinkies and st like they'll buy what? like they'll buy like Twinkies from like the 70s and shit like that and okay and the fact that those are still yeah possibly edible but there are there are nobody should be consuming that there are people that do the same thing with other products like cans of coke and Lay's potato chips and shit like that and shit like that and they go Literally. they go shit. they go and they actually take everything out and they weigh it all and they get samplings of like piece sizes and shape and yeah there are people disgusting there are, they don't eat them they're sure i bet they actually do there's, there probably are some people i mean that video that i watched with the kids the other day that mark rober video which was kind of funny they uh he had a couple other youtubers on there and they're one of them's an engineer and the other one i don't know I think maybe it's just an engineer as well. Mm -hmm. um, they were trying to do different methods of, they had like these challenges and it was like one versus one. And then Mark Rober had like a, for each thing. So they, they had to do, they had to stick with their thing. So one guy had lava and okay. the other guy had a laser. And they okay. had to use, they had to use their lava and laser for each of these challenges. Okay. But Mark Rober got to do something unique for each challenge. The way that he cooked popcorn was fucking badass, And, that's something that the kids and I were all like, we need to find that little, it's like this little pressure chamber thing. Okay. This, um, uh, Is that why they all wanted to take popcorn today for the last day of school? They wouldn't have this at school. It's <laughs> it's a little state. No, 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 because you had just Probably. seen popcorn yeah. and it was all fresh on the mind. So this little cast iron pressure chamber, right? Uh -huh. So you put all your kernels in there, latch it closed, mm -hmm. and then you heat the whole thing up and it's like on this like rotisserie thing. And then they took this giant trash bag, okay. right? And they held it like right at the end of it. And they popped the lid off. And because all the kernels, they were cooked under pressure. So they, they maintained their form. Okay. When he opened it, it was literally a fucking miniature explosion. It blew the fucking trash bag across the room with all the popcorn in it. Did the popcorn pop though? Yeah. It, and, they, and it was edible? They had... They had uh, put salt and butter, melted butter in the bag. So when it hit and just, it all mixed right there in the bag and it just reached in. Okay. But then they also cooked the popcorn with lasers and lava. And those were not as edible. Not, <laughs> I don't think that a lava one would be edible. I could see the laser one. So, so here's, here's where he fucked up. Okay. He put the lava in the cast iron. Oh, instead yeah. Instead no. of sitting yeah, no. cast iron on the lava. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He fucked up. But they were, it was funny, so they put it in there, and then they were, like, popping off, and, like, it was a like, carrying lava with it, and so they were all... Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So, literally, a volcano explosion. Yeah. That's funny. And then they were, they made a, a complete tangent. They made these, like, different things. They had to try and sink a boat. They had mm -hmm. a mannequin that looked like them on it mm -hmm. in this little retention pond. Okay. And the guy that had the lava, he had the little thing that they melt the rocks in. Okay. And they built a trebuchet to launch... The fucking lava into the boat. You never hit it, but it was pretty cool. Well, because I was mentioned for the, I don't know, two seconds ago about it was the last day of school. That reminded me, I brought up this morning that we needed to stop by Port City Java, a local coffee shop, to get gift cards for the teachers and say thank you. Mm -hmm. And Andrew goes, Shouldn't you have started the school year with the gift cards to bribe the teachers? Instead, so instead I have a question for you guys. Instead of thanking your teachers, wouldn't it make more sense what to enter the school better, year? What is better, starting the school year with gift cards to quote unquote bribe your teachers yeah. or end the school year you start by your, thanking them? You What's better? You start your school year off with a good impression. This is a nice kid. Doesn't even know me. Brought me a gift. So you act nice and you are nice oh, and you do good because, things. Because you're not. In you're, school. Your, your teacher's not going to get to know everybody right away. 
It's going to take them a couple days or a couple weeks. And with Cooper, he's... Yeah, but you also don't... I don't think you want to start on the foot of here is a bribe. You don't say it that way. <laughs> yeah, you but that's, end that's, with a thank you. But that's you. what it is. You walk in there. You say, hey, I'm looking forward to the school year. I got a gift card for you because I know that being a teacher is, is difficult. Here's some coffee money. And then... The first time that he has a, an assignment that he misses or that he's late on, she'll remember that or he'll remember that and be like, you know what? Cooper's a nice kid. I'm going to give him an extra day. I don't know. So you guys, I'm please, right. please let us know who I is right. right. I'm right. I'm right. Am I right no. that you end with a thank you? No. Or is he right that you start with a bribe? No, the thank you is finishing school. I've shown my appreciation by completing my assignments. <laughs> You're exasperating. Nope. On that note. Goodbye. Goodbye.